this is something that as GMs or DMs, I think we should probably do more, but we don't. So let me know what you think at the end of the video. Welcome back everyone. This is one of those videos in the Gibbering GM series when I talk about various aspects of role-playing games from the GM or the DM's point of view. In this video, I want to talk about whether we should be putting skills or spells the party do not have into our adventures. Okay, that probably needs a little bit of an explanation. So let me try. So whenever we are creating adventures, we probably have a group of characters in mind when we're designing it. Those characters have certain skills or spells or abilities. You know what these are and you probably add situations or, or encounters within the scenarios into the adventure so that each character can use those skills. But would you ever put in a scenario into your adventure that requires the character or party to do a skill that or spell that they do not have. So let me make it a little bit clearer by giving you an example. So for example, does that door in the adventure need a certain spell to be cast on it in, o in order to open it? Or is there a section of the adventure that really needs a navigation role because they, the party have to circumvent some fast foaming rapid waters? Well, in both those cases, you know in advance that the party does not have that spell or those skills to do this successfully. So do you put those situations with those specific spells and skills needed into your adventure? Well, I think we should be putting those skills or spells that the party do not have into our adventures. And I'm going to give you three really good reasons why I think we should. So my first reason is get them thinking. So whenever they encounter or are confronted with a scenario that they don't have the spells or the skills for, they really have two options. They either walk away and just think we're not doing it, or they try to think of another way around it. This is one aspect of role-playing games that I love both as a GM and a player. It's that moment when we have to start making things up or ad-libbing as the spell or as the game progresses. So solving problems is something that I really enjoy doing in the real world. So understandably, I would like to put these into my games. And I think we have lots of examples of this in our current campaigns when characters or players, should I say, will say, can I use this skill in order to? And they're thinking about their own solutions and then trying to use the existing skills they have in order to overcome that problem. Of course, if the party are not great problem solvers and they can't think of any other way of getting around it, then either just put, either just use a spell they have or just let them walk away and they can come back to try to open that secret door into the hidden dragon's treasure another day. So my second reason for putting um, situations into the game that the party have not got the skills or spells for, I'm going to get really bored of saying that, is because of character progression. So whenever the party or the characters have experienced these scenarios in the past, I found that it really starts to motivate the players to think how should they encourage or how should they allow their own character to progress and sometimes that has meant them coming back and purchasing new skills or developing skills that was quite were quite low often in our experience role sessions i've heard the players start to say things like after experiencing that or seeing how bad we were at 
and then they start to invest roles into points into those roles to improve what their characters can do and sometimes it's even something that they've already trained in but they did really badly and think uh, it's time to change that this can also lead to some very interesting um, character progressions but also side adventures you know is there a teacher who teaches this spell or this skill that they have to go off and locate and interact with and finally my third point ow just hit my finger there hiring npcs so if the party are not actually prepared to learn or develop skills then they do have another option open to them they can hire someone to provide that skill for them now this can in introduce new npcs into the game or even a second adventure to the main one you know maybe the characters are going to have to go out and find this npc and convince them to join the quest and some real good influence or social conflict rules there happening of course in order to join the party the npc might require an, another service or job that the party have to complete before they will go along or maybe they will or they're going to demand a bigger cut of the final reward that's always a really interesting moment both at the conception and the agreement to the deal and when it's time to carry it out i think i have a real evil streak in me and i think if i ever played a character it would be somebody who was not nasty but definitely was working on the dark side of lots of things yeah that's quite worrying isn't it I hope this video gives you some ideas for introducing those skills or spells your current group do not have. It can be interesting and it can also develop your existing campaign as well as the characters who play in it. Until next time, this is the Gibbering GM going back to his own campaign. Happy roleplaying everyone. See ya. Bye.